Does the Bible talk about partnership? Big time. In God's plan, partnership, or co-worker, or the word fellowship actually means partnership. It's all about Jesus, and it's all about the anointing, the anointing that is on us, the anointing that's in this, in this, on this church. You can also use it in your own life. You can apply it to your own life. You can partake of it. Let me turn, take this off and turn this on. Hallelujah. We have partnered up with Jerry Savelle Ministries. And um, I said that yesterday with the business building breakfast that I found that the, the people that I was associating with um, I, I'm expecting to go to meetings and to hear things that will make me take a step of faith and make me take a step to grow even greater and to begin to believe God for even greater things to happen, uh, greater things to happen within the church and so on and so on. When I went to these meetings, I discovered that everyone was looking to me and they wanted to know what I was doing. And they said, oh, that's a great idea. I think we can do, we can put that into our church. And so what they were doing is they were drawing off of me when the whole time I was needing to get drawn off of somebody else. And I mean, I spent time praying and I believe in God and, and people like Rob Thompson that's coming here in January. He walked into this church and he says, pastor, he says, I've been in many churches, but I see this very thing as he's looking around that I do not see in other churches. So where did you get your vision of what you got done here in this church from? And I was like, I was kind of taken back. And he, he was serious. And I says, like that. I was just, um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And he says, God has given you a vision. And because of the vision that, you, that God has given you, you watch, he will surround you with people to help you fulfill that vision. Now, why is that important? Well, I went to, I went to Jerry Savelle Ministries, and, and, I, and I go back and forth with Joe McCroskey, who's the vice president, and we bounce, I bounce some things off of him, and and different things. I want to know what's going on in their ministry, what they're, what they're believing God for, where they're going. And, and it's so neat to be hooked up with them because it stretches me. You always want to hook up with somebody who's got a bigger vision than you because it'll make you grow. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, it says, and I'm going to give you some scripture, we then as workers together with him... Beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Working together with him, with Jesus. You need to know that we're working together with Jesus. And as we're working together with Jesus, and it says up there, um, it says up there, uh, also know that you receive not the grace of God in vain. In other words, the grace that is upon this church, you can also partake of that same grace in your life. Romans 8.17 says, If children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, it says, We are laborers together with God, and you are God's husbandry. You are God's building. So God lives on the inside of you, like John said this morning. We're a photocopy of him. He, when you get born again, when you've asked Jesus Christ to come in, into your heart, you come into your life, you said, Jesus, come into my life. I'm making my Lord my Savior. When you have done that, it says now you are a temple. If you look in the Old Testament, where did God dwell? In the temple. Well, now we are living temples, and this is where he dwells and he's in us. Partnership is about getting the burden removing, yoke destroying, power of God 
equally distributed amongst every and every and each and every one of you. The anointing in you, I need it. And you need my anointing in order to accomplish and do what he's called us to do. You were born for such a time as this. You were born for this day and time. And whatever the enemy has come to steal, kill, or destroy, says in John 10, 10, thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. What, is he, what has he done in your life? What has he stolen from you? What is, what is he trying to destroy, s- destroy in your life? Get you to a place of depression and oppression to the point that you just want to, I just want to die. Well, that's the enemy. Because it says then if you go on, he says, but I have come that you may have life more abundantly to the full till it overflows. Whoa. How come I'm always dealing with the devil and I'm not experiencing the overflow? Who are you hanging with? Partnership. Who are you spending time with? Partnership. Proverbs chapter 13. See, partnership is all about what you will receive by association. Who are you associating with? Proverbs 13 verse 20 says, He who walks with wise men will be stupid. Is that what it says? It's amazing. I go, I, I used to go to business uh, things and people would teach, and whether they know it or not, they're actually teaching biblical principles. And it's, it's amazing at, even as I'm teaching, and, and I've actually had business people say, you know what, Pastor, why don't you hold a one-day seminar and we'll get a bunch of people to come to it? Because what you teach is changing our lives Changing our business. Whoa. To the point of a guy that I know. To a point of a guy I know. I've known him for a number of years now. To the point that he didn't believe that he he thought to be poor was normal. Barely getting by was normal. Barely getting by. To the point that he is now a millionaire. And he says, you know why it's so? He says, because I associate with you. And the things that you teach, I've put into practice over the years. And because of the things that you teach, God has led me into areas and places that so stretch me. He says... You won't believe it because I was raised Baptist that it, everything that you taught and everything that you would, you, you teach me, he says, went so against the teaching of my Baptist brain. <laughs> Nuggets that I teach you, you need to run with. Yes, Johnny. (laughs) He that walks with wise men will be wise. Philippians chapter 1. Paul refers to this church as being partners with him. Of all the churches that Paul went to and he traveled during his life, and all the churches that he traveled and he spoke in and he started and he established, all the churches, there was only one that partnered with him. I've had people come up to me and say, Pastor, if it wasn't for you and the ministry that's, that's here today, man, I want you to know I wouldn't be where I am today. To some of them, I've actually said this. Have you ever thought about becoming a partner with us? And they said, well, no, I've never ever thought about what, what does that mean? See, we don't have membership in our church. We have partnership. And there's a huge difference. Membership, you pay a fee. To be able to come and go to that club. This isn't about it. Partnership's about sharing the anointing. Sharing the gospel. Sharing the good news. So that you can become the ones that do the work of the ministry. You're the ones. Galatians 6.6 But let him that 
is taught in the word communicate. Whoa, the word communicate, just a second. To communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. That you are able to communicate with those that you, that have taught you. Communicate here means more than walking up to someone in the ministry and saying, wow, that was a good message this Sunday, pastor. Change my thinking. And I go, oh, okay. I've had that happen to me so many times. So many times. Pastor, what a message it was on Sunday. And I, and I go, okay. And I just mentally write their name down in my brain. And then I, when I get home, I write their name down. I watch their life. Week after week after week. Nothing's changing in their life. What they need to do is come up to me and say, Pastor, that message, whew, I got some things I got to change in my life. There's some cha- things I need to do differently. That would mean more to me than, oh, Pastor, great message this Sunday. Why? Because it shows me that you are going to work on something. See, pastor, what a good message that was doesn't mean a hill of beans. It doesn't mean you're going to change anything. It was just a good message. Good preaching, pastor. Yeah. You know what? You you, you didn't even hardly say, and like, and, and like, and, and like, and too many times. Uh Uh-huh. As a result. Communicate means to literally contribute to someone's support. Another meaning is to partner with them. So when you do it, it says in Philippians chapter 1, that the anointing, the vision, the prosperity, the health, the grace that is on this ministry, where can you can be a partaker of it and have it come into your life to be able to turn around and to share it with somebody else outside of this four walls. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, in the Amplified says, I thank God in all my remembrance of you. Every In every prayer of mine, I always make an entree, entre, uh, and petition for you with all joy and delight. This is very interesting, because Sveta and I pray for all of you. Paul, did you know it's interesting, because Paul... After he got people saved, that's when he started praying for people. Yeah. Johnny knows exactly when to say the right thing. After they got saved, he started praying for them. That their lives would be changed. I have that next Sunday. It's one of my last messages. I thank God... It says, I think in verse five, it says, I thank my God for your fellowship. Your fellowship means also means partnership. I thank you for your fellowship. So the Amplified is, does a really good job on this in, in Philippians one, three and verse five. It says this. I thank my God for your fellowship, your cooperation and contributions and partnership in advancing the good news, the gospel, from the first day you heard it until now. Now, it's quite interesting because from the first day they heard it, first day they heard it, they partnered. Some people, the Bible scholars claim that when Paul had written this book, they estimated that they were partners anywhere from 10 to 20 years with him. They supported him. This, this letter is actually a partner letter to them. And he's writing to his partners. He goes on in verse 6 that he says this. And I'm convinced and, and, and sure of this very thing. That he who has begun a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ. Right up to the time of his return. Developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion or maturity. In other words, you need to get out of your diapers and become mature. 
In other words, you're no longer gossiping. In other words, you're no longer offended because Pastor Doug didn't talk to you. No longer offended or, or ticked off because somebody didn't smile at you today. Mature. Because you have partnered with me that your life is not only going to be good, but Jesus Christ is going to make it become even better and better as you walk with him. It goes on to verse 7 says, For it is only right for me to feel the, this way about all of you. All of you. All of you. Because I have you in my heart. Since both in prison and in the defense and confirmation of the gospels, you all say, I am. You all are partakers of the grace with me or you're partakers of my grace. The grace that was upon Paul's life is also in your, you can partake and be, he's saying, you can also partake and have it run in your life. In other words, you do not have to be so dogmatic in your life. Oh, I'm just Russian, or I'm just German, or I'm just Scottish, that's me. No, no, no. John said this morning, we're a photocopy. We need to become and act like our father. Does that take work? You bet it does. That I'm like, I am so pumped and excited that I no longer swear. Wow. I am pumped and excited that I'm actually healthy and whole. I am so excited. See, my father in heaven is changing my life. And I'm so grateful and thankful because of his grace on my life that I can walk in a fullness that he wants for me. See, the same grace that has come upon me also can come upon The very first church I attended never taught about this. And wow, as the first three years of my Christian, they weren't great. Even though, even though I was a tither, I worked in many areas in the church at the same time. When people say, well, I, Pastor, I only work in this one area. And I'm thinking, holy smokes, have you ever seen my life in this first church? I mean, I was on the board. I was the guy that did communion. I was the guy that that did kids, kids, uh, boys club. I was the one that taught in, uh, in, in uh, youth. I was, the one, I was like, I was like seven places in this church doing seven different things. And I just thought it was normal. I thought it was normal just to do everything that, that I just wanted to please him. I just want to do all that God wanted for me. And, as I did those things, I got nailed. I got hammered because no one ever taught me that I had an enemy. And no one ever taught me that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy in my life. I, the first three years of my life, of Christian life, it was great until I became a Christian. Just let you know. When you tell people, you know what, now that you're a Christian, it's going to be a bed of roses. Well, there's a lot of thorns. And, uh, it wasn't until I got into a word of faith church that something on the inside of me began to change. Do you mean, what do you mean I, I can talk to hailstorms? What, what do you mean that, that, that grasshoppers can't eat my crops? What do you mean that, 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 ah, like one example, one example, one, one summer we had no rain. No rain. And dad, dad came over to, the, over to where I was in, in our, in, in where I was living. And he says, you know what? We don't get any rain, man. And I says, I was praying about this morning. God gave me a scripture and he's going to bring the water from the ground and he's going to bring it up. And, uh, we don't have to worry about it. Well, that year, our neighbors got anywhere from eight to ten. One, one neighbor about eight miles away got twelve bushel an acre. And I, and I didn't realize it. I just thought everybody was getting the same thing as we were getting. I didn't know that. They weren't. Until I got on the phone talking to them. 
And I said, how did, yeah, after harvest, I, how did you guys make out this year? You know, I'm talking to my best friends. And it was a disaster. A disaster. They just had enough to carry them through, to be able to plant seed, and to hope and believe God for, well, didn't, not necessarily didn't believe God, but that they would have a better crop next year. And we had that year, we had 38, 40, 42 bushel acre crops. See, when I got into a word of faith, all of a sudden I, I had a faith that rose up in me that, I, that had always been there. But then I learned how to begin to speak to it and speak to it. Now, a lot of Christians confessing Philippians 4, 19, my God shall supply. How, how many know that scripture? My God shall supply all his needs, all my needs according to his. Did you, not everybody knows that scripture? Wow. Well, let me say this. I'm sorry to say this, but there are Christians that are not entitled to confess that scripture over themselves. But pastor, I thought we could confess anything over ourselves. This is a book that was written to partners by the Holy Ghost inspired, written to partners. And because of what the partners did, they had every legal right to be able to use that scripture. And same as the grace that they could partake in, same thing with this riches meets all my needs according to his riches and glory. Because this was written by the... Oh, okay. Today, today, it would be a church or a ministry. If you're partnered with a church or a ministry, that ministry, if it's helped you grow spiritually, you need to partner up with it. See, Paul, uh, Paul's ad- addressing his partners saying in Philippians 14, uh, 419, sorry, But now my God shall supply, now because of a condition that has been met, certain requirements that have been fulfilled, what were they? Because you have partnered with me, I write this by the Holy Ghost, my God will supply your needs. This scripture was given by the Holy Spirit, and it applies to everybody who's in partnership. Now, partnership means you get involved in an area. Partnership, talking about uh, getting involved in an area. Sven and I volunteered, and I said last week that we got a surprise for you this week. We volunteered, and her and I are, and her and I, and I thank you, somebody else. Uh, where's Elena? Elena, she wa- she's so pumped and excited about this. We're going to go work in the cafe area after, and we're going to give you coffee. And we're going to give you, we're, we got specials. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to run a contest, my wife against me. I, you ever notice I'm a little competitive? <laughs> See, are, are you a partner with this ministry? That's why we're giving out partnership applications. Are you a partnership with this ministry? Because maybe it's helped you grow up spiritually. Maybe all your swearing and cursing, instead of doing it 20 times a day, you're down to three. Hey, let me tell you, that's where I came from. I curse and swear all the time. And I got down to, down to you know, a couple times a day, down to, thank you, Jesus. I haven't swore in a month now. Thank you, Lord, for helping me. You know, as you learn. See, our vision here is to help people raise up to their God-given destiny. Our vision here is to help people to raise up to their God-given destiny. What has God called you to do? We will help you. And we'll help you by praying, coming into agreement, believing with you. That God has a calling on your life. He has given you a talent. He has given you things to be a huge benefit for the body of Christ. Amen. Amen? Amen. So our vision for this 
Church is to help people rise up to the God-given destiny. How many do not know that vision? All right, all of you know that vision now. I'm speaking to 200 people in healthcare system. And I said to them, I said, I said, many of you are struggling and, and having issues because you do not know what the vision of your organization is. Tell me what the vision of your organization is. And, and, and they all went. And I said, and you should know what the mission is because the mission is to accomplish what the vision is. Whatever the vision is. So our vision is to help people rise up to the God-given destiny. How, what is our mission? We have a mission that we have provide Bible studies. We do business building. I do business building breakfast. We have ladies groups. All, all to help you to rise up to your God-given destiny. Kids force. Little, little, little kids. Um, sound. All kinds of areas. There, there's, it's amazing. All the areas. I mean, music. I mean, you want to, you want to get involved with music? Come on Thursday nights. Get committed. If the vis, if the ministry has benefited you, helped you, developed you, made you grow up spiritually, if we prayed for you and God's turned situations around in your life, that's what Paul's saying in Philippians. Then you can use Philippians 4.19. Because they were partners. Realize there's a spiritual law in effect that you're able to communicate and support as you do your part. Jesus Christ will give you the increase in your life. What are you needing for an increase in your life in what area of your life? I've had people, many people over the years say to me, and I'm thinking of an example in Kindersley, Saskatchewan. This, this is very interesting. One person came up to me. I remember we, he wanted to have a coffee with me and have a meeting with me. And he says, you know, I was just praying. I was praying one day and he says, God just told me not to give any money to, to the church that I was going to, Kindersley Christian Fellowship. I'm talking about partnering being a partner with a local church, being faithful, supporting, helping, honoring your local pastor, bringing to pass what God has placed on the pastor's heart. See, there are rewards for something so simple as honoring and being a person of your word, integrity, and not being late for meetings. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> That, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. It's between somebody and myself. Even though this person was born again, never did well after he told me this statement. It's interesting. After he told me this statement, he lost his wife. I mean, got divorced, lost his kids. His business went down the tubes. Bankrupt. It's interesting. He is now in heaven. Died prematurely. Shouldn't have happened. Isn't that interesting? Do not make a statement out of your mouth. The reason it happened. See, this past person never honored the pastor. Never honored the word of God. Which means he never honored God. The Bible study we're doing right now explains it so well. Come on a Wednesday night. Learn how to honor your pastor. Learn how to honor one another. Learn how to honor governments. I don't know about that, Prime Minister. You know, whoa, 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 whoa. My ears weren't created to listen to this. No talking. I'm praying for him. Right? Honor firefighters, police officers, nurses. Ah, that old crabby old nurse when I was in the hospital. No, 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 no. I always, every time, like these health people, I mean, I honored them. I don't want to be working in that area. That isn't what God's called me to do. But I'm so thankful for them that God's called them to do that. Amen? 
It is potentially dangerous when somebody is absolutely convinced that they heard a word from God. It's dangerous. I've had it happen to me so many times. People come up to me and say, I got a word from God. Because they're really convinced that they heard from God. And even though they may have heard or may not have heard from God, they are convinced that they heard from God even if they're wrong. I believe that our wise Father God, wise Father God, wise Father God, gave us places to check whether we think we heard from God or not. Number one, you got to check it with the Word of God. You have to. The Holy Spirit would never tell you to do something that is contrary to the Word because the Holy Spirit is the one that wrote the Bible. Right? So you never go contrary to it. Indwelling in the Holy Spirit. that You, you get to a place that you trust and, and recognize that voice. It's the Holy Spirit speaking to me. That you get to that place that, that you can do it. But still, check it out with the Word. Spiritual leaders or your pastor. Check it out with your pastor. I remember a couple in Kindersley, Saskatchewan. And, and, and I'm on staff there. And um, this couple, they, they kind of met each other and they they were started to date a bit and uh, they decided they wanted to get married. They were not engaged at the time, but they wanted to get married and they wanted to take pre-marriage course. I highly recommended it. And I says, yeah, yeah, it'd be great. I will do it with you. No problem. I'd love to do it with you. So we started working through this. This other single guy says to me, I was in prayer last night, fasting and praying. And man, I haven't ate for three days. And I just know that I know God's word. And he told me I'm supposed to marry this woman. That I'm, that I'm conducting a, a pre-marriage course with her and another guy. But this guy is so convinced. I mean, he got so, I says, whoa. I mean, it came down to the one, finally, after, after talking, I said, and he, and he was so convinced God told him that he was supposed to marry and that she will not marry him, but she will dump him and she'll come and marry this guy. And I finally said to him, I said, you know what? The God that I serve is not the same one. And the God that speaks to me is not the same one that is speaking to you right now. I said, it is a lie. Well, got ticked off me, left the church. But guess what? This couple that I did pre-marriage course for, I ended up marrying them in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. First time I ever did a wedding, my pastor, a wise pastor, wise. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He says, write out your whole wedding ceremony. I says, why? Piece of cake. And I, and I, and he says, no, I, you know what, Doug, I just really encourage you, write it out. I said, okay, I'll write it out. I wrote it all out. Got up. I've known these guys for several years now. I'm totally comfortable with them. Got up there and there's 300 people. And Mike always, always says to me, I have never been to a marriage ceremony that took less than five minutes. <laughs> I was so nervous. Guess what? They're still married today. They are still married today. See, when people, sometimes when they think they heard from God, they never check it out with their pastor. You know, and it's quite interesting because it shows me that they don't necessarily honor the pastor. They do things and then they turn around and they get in a situation or circumstance to say, Pastor, I'm in this place. I need your prayer of agreement because I'm going through this da 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 da. And I'm going, Oh, how did you get into that? I'm not telling you to come and talk to me all the time, but I'm telling you, there is checks that God has put in the Word of God that you need to go to the Word and see if this is really what God wants you to do, where He wants you to be, and so on and so on. 
Or there is other ones that uh, you can go to. And let me say this. Just because you run into, say, somebody's in this church and they go, Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, I pray for five hours. So what? They're not necessarily spiritual leaders. Amen? You got to know in your heart. You, if you think you're going to go and check, some, you know, check it out with somebody, if you'd come talk to me first, I'll tell you whether to go and talk to them or not. Because I know everybody. And I know where they are spiritually. And, I, and, and, and I, I, there's people here that I trust. I mean, I would just throw them at these people. Because I know where they are maturely. But there's other people that are not so mature. And even though they may look mature, may say all the right things maturely. But I know their life. I'd go, you know what? I'd suggest maybe go and see and... Wow, being a partner, eh? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17 says this. Obey your leaders, submit to them, for they have watch over your souls and they will give an account. Do you realize that I actually have to give an account over your soul? So I do not want to be teaching you something. (laughs) I don't want to be teaching you something that... I mean, the extreme grace right now is to the place where you don't even have to get saved. You, I mean, even the, I mean, it's so out of whack. And, and I would never teach it here. You know what, where grace is? This is where grace is, is when you take a step of, in faith, the grace of God is there with, stop, with power and strength to make you get through what you need to go through. It is not going out and sinning. Going out and sinning. I, I just talked to a pastor this week. And uh, I says, how's it going? And I says, I haven't, heard, I haven't talked to you. And he says, I haven't talked to you for a long time. I says, how's your church doing? He says, you wouldn't believe it. He says, I'm teaching faith. I'm teaching, you know, the, the people need to learn to tithe. And they need to learn to give. And, 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 and I'm talking about walking in integrity. And I'm talking about all these things. Guess what? All my young adults left my church. He said, hello? He said, they left my church, and they're going to an extreme grace church where they can go to the bars and drink, and it's okay. They can live just exactly like the world, and it's okay. You can come on Sunday and just go, oh, God, you already know what I did. Thank you. Just continue on living on my life. It's sad. I keep on getting on the inside of me that in the, in before Christ comes, there will be a remnant that are going to bring in the return of Jesus Christ. We are going to be that remnant. And I don't care what any other church says. I don't care what they preach. I don't care what they do. If you stick with me and become a partner, we will see the return of Christ because we are going to do what the Word of God says. And I will not compromise. I will not compromise. I, this, I'm, I'm going to end with this. I'm on page five. Obey your parents. I mean your leaders. Obey, <laughs> obey your parents. <laughs> and the Lord. Because there's a promise you live a long life. A couple of weeks ago, uh, I think it was two weeks ago or whatever, Sven and I had the opportunity and we're talking to this person and um, he's, he's gay. And, and I, be, I befriended him and, and encouraged him to come to church and so on and so on and so on. Uh, he's no longer my friend, I guess. He, he doesn't talk to me anymore. And, and the reason is, is because... Um, he happened to get on the subject about getting married to a guy. And I said to him, uh, before I will marry you and a guy, two guys, I said, you actually have to take a 13-week, um, you have to take a 13-week pre-marriage course with me teaching it. 
at the end of the 13 weeks, you will know what God says about getting married. And, I, and, and he says, well, do I really have to? I says, yes, it's in our constitution. And, and I have it in our constitution. And it says the bylaw that, that they have to take a 13-week course with me. Well, needless to say, that meeting ended up very, very short. Haven't heard from him since. Haven't talked to him since. Because I think he kind of got ticked off that, but you know what? I will not compromise on the word. There is churches that will compromise and they will say, yeah, come on. We'll marry you. No problem. God, you're born again. God loves you. Yeah, he does love you. And you may be born again, but guess what? He detests certain things. And I'm not going to compromise on the things that he detests. And I will, and I, and I'll, and I'll preach it. I'll preach what God so desires. I mean, he says, man and woman. Right? Adam and Eve, not John and Steve. Amen. Amen. So there's certain things that I will not compromise. And, and, I, and, and in saying that, I know that I'm responsible for the things that I teach you. I'm accountable for your souls. I'm accountable. And, and I'm going to have to give an account. And I'm going to go, God, I, 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 let me teach the truth. I mean, every Sunday I'm going, God, let me teach the truth. I do not want to teach something that would make someone stumble or somebody fall. Or I don't want to do that. I, I, and, and my heart is that, that way. So, Sveta, we get to... Hallelujah. Those of you that are watching, you want to partner up with us, let us know. We'll send you out a form. You can be a partner with us and participate of the same anointing that's on me. Where you see crippled people walking, blind eyes opening, God doing amazing miracles, making people that were poor, 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 become now very, very rich. You know, that, that, that is... That is my belief of how God wants you. He has an amazing life for you. From this day forward, He wants you to be healthy. He wants you to be prospering. He wants these things for you. Amen?